This is Paw Print, an animal rescue community. Episode 10. I'm Harold Ree. I'm Nancy Ree. Today's guest is the talented Aya Eintracht. Aya writes for her own blog called Petting Truck. Her posts focus on her family of cats and dogs. She tends to prefer white, long haired cats and black Newfoundland dogs. Today, she's going to share two stories. First, Mino the cat, and second, Oreo the dog. If you want to learn more about Aya, go to our show notes at thisispawprint.com slash 10. That's the number 10. Here's Aya Eintracht with her first rescue story entitled, In the Loving Memory of Mino. Many years ago, in a different country, I was reading a local newspaper and came across a sad story. It was about a young musician that succumbed to depression and committed suicide. He had a cat named Mino. Six months after his death, the cat was still waiting to be adopted. All this time, he stayed at the musician's apartment without proper care or human company. There was a phone number of a woman relative, so I called the same day and scheduled an appointment to see Mino. We met in front of the apartment building. She seemed sad and disinterested. We climbed the stairs, reached the apartment, and she unlocked the door. Eager with anticipation, I took a step forward and almost fainted. The smell was horrendous. I closed and then opened my eyes. The scene was totally surreal. There was poop everywhere on the floor. A strange creature, possibly a cat, was walking towards me. He was a big one, all skin and bones. His fur was so dirty and matted, I couldn't tell his color. But the most amazing thing about him were his eyes. Huge, yellow eyes were looking at me with friendly curiosity. He meowed as if saying, it took you long enough to get here. His eyes locked into mine, and I stopped caring about the dirt and the smell. I scooped him up, and we left. Nina turned out to be a gorgeous cat with a keen sense of humor. He made me laugh and was my best friend for 16 years. At the age of 18, Mino died in my arms and will be missed forever. When you read in the local newspaper about this... It was uh, the man that committed suicide. I was just about ready to adopt a cat. I was working more normal hours. And I was just reading about the story. And and I just made the decision just right there. But, you know, the most amazing thing about this cat was that I can describe what I found when I got into that apartment. You know, usually cats are very clean animals, and this was not uh, an environment that he obviously was okay with. He was skin and bones. And yet, he was this, this shining personality. That moment, it was clear to me that, you know, we belonged together, and I just picked him up, and I left. And he was an amazing cat, just amazing, friendly and smart, and he made me laugh. He was my cat, definitely my cat. When you went to this apartment, who was actually there? He was there by himself for six months. Oh my I gosh. think the reason he survived is was because the, the neighbors were just throwing food in the balcony for him. Mm. He was in a really bad shape. He was so skinny. It took me, uh, I think, maybe six months to get him back to where he was. And he was a big cat. He was about 20 pounds. An armful of cat was uh, <laughs> really a big cat. <laughs> was this the first time that you had a pet who died in your arms, as you say? Yes, it was the first time that uh, I lost. He, he was 18 and he was the first one of my old gang that died. And it was a very traumatic experience. Um, he was also the only one that was not euthanized, but just died in my arms. As I right, said. right. Now that you've had so many different rescue animals and and animals in general, how can you describe the whole grieving process, the mourning process? For anybody that had a connection with the animal, it's uh, very, very hard. Between yourself and the animal is staring and it just causes an unbearable pain. It's a very hard process. I had to confront this grief with his death. Everybody's different. Everybody is uh, dealing with grief differently. It wouldn't have been so hard if we didn't love them so much. To expect it not to hurt after so many years of loving them and having this connection with them, I would say it's illogical. (laughs) Of course it will hurt, but it is worth it. To me, it's worth it. 
I grew up in Russia. Unfortunately, there is a lot of stray animals, both dogs and cats. As a kid, I couldn't do much. I was just feeding them and building shelters for them. It was just such a sad situation. They're domesticated animals. They're not supposed to be without a family. Mm. I, I just could not ignore it. I, I mm. just couldn't. Oreo was my second dog. Oreo was my third dog, actually. Oreo? She had certain issues that probably showed that she was not treated well in the past. Uh, she was an impulse adoption, and I already had two two dogs, Carlo and Tony. She turned out to be a challenge, a challenge for me, mm. because I never had to deal with aggression before. None of my dogs were ever aggressive towards people, and she was aggressive towards children. We couldn't walk past the child without her lunging at him or her. She meant business. You know, it was not just she wanted to deal with a child, let's put it this way. I don't know why. Maybe she was uh, abused before I got her, or maybe it was just a natural thing. I don't know. I discovered that I was lacking the tools to address that. And it made things very difficult because we live with our dogs 24-7. You know, we go everywhere with them. We go on vacations with them. We go to eat with them. And I had to be on, constantly on guard with her because she really, really did not like children. We did a lot of training. She was more controllable. But still, you know, I could never relax with her just as I could with my other dogs. And I had to watch her. And then I got pregnant and I was just worried out of my mind because I didn't know what's going to happen. We did some trainings with the dolls and all that, but it's not the same thing as the real thing, obviously. I gave birth to my son and we, we came home and I just put him to introduce the dogs to the baby. I was really worried. She just... He cried and I was like, oh my God, now I have to pounce on Oreo, get her away from him. And then she looked at me. I knew, you know, that she she's not going to do anything to him. Now it's her turning point, basically. And I need to give her that opportunity. She did not disappoint me. She was uh, my son's second mom, just as I wrote in the blog. She loved him. She licked him. She was an amazing, an amazing second mom to him. She understood that this is not a weird human. It's just a baby. It's a puppy. And once she understood that, there was no aggression anymore. That's, you know, that's what I think happened. She stopped being reactive to other kids as well. She just understood these are kids. Now we have Aya Eintracht reading her second rescue story entitled Oreo, the Second Mom. I adopted Oreo on an impulse. A friend of mine was visiting and she had a cute four-month-old Newfoundland puppy with her. At that time, I already had two well-behaved dogs. Oreo got along with them extremely well. I thought since I handled two giant dogs so well, I can handle a third. Interesting way of thinking, right? Well, many times afterwards, I questioned my sanity with this decision. Oreo was full of extremes. She was the only dog I've ever had that was housebroken within one day. She was a natural athlete and the best swimmer and diver. Oreo possessed the speed of a racing horse. She was the only Newfoundland I've known that could outrun greyhounds. Oreo was also extremely aggressive to kids. First time I discovered that was during a walk. I was not prepared and she, using her athleticism to the fullest, pulled me on a leash while lunging towards the kid. I made a nice, wide arc in the air, landing on my face, seeing from the corner of my eye Oreo going for the kid's ankles. We did a lot of training and she became more controllable, but I still couldn't trust her around children. She never beat anybody, but would make a quiet growl every time she saw a child. Many dogs would react to kids making noises or carrying sticks. Oreo was indiscriminate child hater. My other dogs tried to teach her that kids are fun. That didn't help. Eventually, they gave up, and whenever she was growling at children, would just look in the other direction with we don't know her look on their faces. When she was about one year old, I became pregnant. Needless to say, I was worried out of my mind about her and the baby. 
the day my husband and I came back from the hospital with our newborn son, Nate, all three dogs were waiting for us at the door. We placed the carrier on the floor and let each of the dogs sniff the baby while watching Oreo very carefully. Suddenly, Nate cried. I was terrified and ready to pounce on Oreo. Oreo looked at him, tilted her huge head from side to side. She looked at me and amazingly went on the down stay near the carrier and slowly, gently started to lick his small fingers and face. From that moment, whenever Nate cried, Oreo was right there to comfort him. She was never aggressive to kids again. When she died, I was so devastated I couldn't cry. Few months afterwards, my husband was arranging a family album. He called me and our son and said, look guys, Oreo is on all the pictures with Nate. He was right. Oreo was on almost all the pictures by our son's side throughout his life ever since. He was a newborn. Our son looked at me and said, she was like my second mom. And I finally cried. Oreo sadly passed away three years ago. Aya's son, Nate, was nine years old at the time. Thanks to Aya Eintracht for sharing her stories of Mino the cat and Oreo the dog. If you want to learn more about Aya, including links to her website, go to our show notes at thisispawprint.com slash 10. If you want to learn more about me and Nancy, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Look for This Is Paw Print, all one word. If you want to listen to more episodes, you can find us on iTunes and SoundCloud. Those are the two most popular platforms. You can also find us on Stitcher, Spreaker, TuneIn, Mixcloud, lots of other places. Go to thisispawprint.com slash iTunes or thisispawprint.com slash SoundCloud. We want to thank all of you, our listeners out there, for inspiring us with your stories and spreading a positive message of love and peace by saving an animal. Have a great day and see you next time on Paw Print. Paw Print is a production of EVER Education. You get it! Oh, the truth. Woohoo!